High clouds on Mars. Mike sat staring at stars. We'd see Earth twinkle. Stuck there on the fourth rock seeing pressure sweets wrinkle. He'd bend a knee, worry of deathly cold made him freeze. Endless whistle of light atmosphere. He checked the temperature, minus a hundred degrees. Dave became restless. It was good having a companion of any kind. A desolate place. Get the samples, Mike concluded. Just sitting's blowing my mind. No point in going back to the support pod. Dave got up. Any place you moved on the surface of planet Mars was covered in dust. They stood before a vast sand dune looking at the terrain. Mineral veins stood in rock. Mike spied something metallic. Give me the geologist's pickaxe box to unlock. They opened it and knocked off a small part of a vein at their feet. It became a gathering mission to complete. We'll need half a dozen specimens of this sort, Mike concluded. Walk in front of me. They progressed along the side of a layered cliff. The crater where they stood had been a sea. Two billion years ago when liquid water had then existed, maybe three. They felt limitedly free. Dave led the way. A heads-up panel on his spacesuit visor indicated maps of the area. Chemicals powered by gravity provided power to electronics that made it merrier. For the thin carbon dioxide atmosphere it was a calm day no storms. The sediment shadowed two interesting forms. In Mars attire with nothing to attract attention but distant dust devils swirling up. It was obvious quadrupeds had never walked the surface. Mike's gloves made a cup. Encumbered in their gear they weighed less than naked on Earth. He sifted loose gravel. Dave watched its worth. Know what we'd get for it in my hometown, asked Mike seeing it fall. Dave thought it stupid. Ear of corn to an automobile if it were gold and all. Useless, there had been gold discovered on the planet, usable as wire. Getting any back home not the value of fuel it'd require. Dave thought of waves washing long sand beaches, watching Mars rust. It fell through Mike's fingers. Iron oxide, minerals ground by abrasion to dust. Mike clapped his hands, trudged to a cliff ending, he stopped. Laying in plain sight, perfectly round spheres, a surface topped. Ready-made balls. Wish I had a nine iron or a two wood Dave, said Mike. Sure, Dave replied. Chip up to green but I don't see no grass, let's hike. And so they did. Arriving at a crater the size of an Olympic pool. Bone dry of course. They stood before it thinking that cool. We didn't come here to tweet Mike. Climb down in there. Look around for a diamond. Dave watched dejectedly as his partner descended. His thoughts were of time and, nothing in here Dave. They'd have to have been brought by volcanoes. Mike crawled out stating, the way it goes. It seemed, a trip for nothing. Too far to the stars. So crowded on Earth nowhere to move. So it was, migrating to another planet seemed to make sense. Fitting the groove. At heart Dave wanted to escape the turmoil back home. Wars, fighting and selfish governments left him alone. Marry a Martian, he thought to himself. Dave looked around at the dry frozen landscape. Mike and he had been diagnosing samples for geologists on Earth as an escape. Specifically minerals that could be used as food, fuel and shelter. Energy wealth in other words. Both felt her. Had a third rock been their mother this fourth one was some distant cousin it reckoned. There were similarity to the two in an evolution the solar system beckoned. How close are we to striking it rich? Dave queried. Bowed from here to Saturn, Mike replied. A mystery lay buried. Keep digging then I guess, Dave unkeyed the communications link for a moment. A transparent visor display required only the connection of his brain component. Magnetic detectors in the helmet literally read simple on-off commands. Electrically enhanced telepathy obey demands. A particle entanglement device, back at the habitat, lay buried beneath the surface. Their base of operations. Used in instant communications, encoded matter its purpose. Reassembly of anything became provided with elements. From guns to mining tools periodic chart developments. Given materials, properly scanned and coded. Three-dimensional construction acted. Covalent electrons make compounds. The fourth rock has no electric fields, granted. Still, old-fashioned radioactive decay gave them electricity. 
survival on Mars was difficult, lacking simplicity. Problem was to find and maintain subterranean contaminant in temperate zones. To store large quantities of nitrogen and oxygen as breathable air it also intones. Liquid water, also a must-have, plentiful reserve. Grow food with ultraviolet light for photosynthesis and preserve. Any objects from home we need to reconstruct out here Dave, Mike asked dissolutely. Yes, Dave replied. The consummate bathing suite model absolutely. Mike stared abjectly, that's a little far gone, Dave. You're delusional. Back home had become threateningly institutional. The two explorers moved on, moving objects occasionally. Rolling over rocks, examining. Beneath one stone they discovered fibers and assessed them damaging. Anything having any effect on their spacesuits was life-threatening. Don't touch it, continued Mike, seriously beckoning. Most advanced pressure suites ever manufactured could be replicated pushing a button. For any surface exploration they were necessary. Death without them became sudden. Below the ground however things were quite ideal. Containment of environment there had become comfortably real. Jackie, in the habitat worried about the two men out on the surface. She loved them. Married Mike, had affairs with Dave long before it. No one named as kin. Childless thus far, they were settlers on a relentless red planet. Mike thought to himself, radiation out here, damn it. What's the rad count Dave? Scanning the meter, entering the danger zone, he replied. Have a few more hours at this level without permanent damage. No one's died. They continued on with their mineral sampling, feeling insides of the advanced composite space suite stampening. She was a looker. Both senses, attractive well as watch for people on the surface. Responsible for their airlock to shelter underground. She served good purpose. How well and long she remained without sleep. Added 40 minutes offset periods of rapid eye movement that were deep. The rotational period of that planet being only slightly more than it is here at home. Buried under the surface with a bubbled shaped, off-planet manufactured, clear dome. The transparent cover inflated and became self-sealing. Occasional debris punctured it. A mile-wide ceiling. Their sampling containers full, the two returned toward the excavated housing colony. Enough for about 20 individuals, fully staffed. Results of advanced technology. Jackie, open the outer lock, signaled Dave. The outside door opened releasing its atmosphere as an air wave. Mike and Dave entered the compression chamber. Jackie shut the outer door. Once pressurization was completed breathable oxygen levels were checked and more. The men began taking off surface suites, stowing samples. Thanks Jackie, said Mike. The two explorers stood as examples. Lieutenant Jackie Blue, Captain David Stark and Major Mike Hassel were team members. The habitat staffed by 12 people. Names important, numbers one remembers. No one was lost yet in the expedition to Mars. Rotation back to Earth occurred by yearly. Dave wore the captain bars. Let's get fed and clean, ordered Mike. Samples can wait to look at. They filed into the big air bubble, descending elevators four levels to the habitat. I love this place but it is like a kind of prison, Mike continue. Dave felt much the same. The superior, Mike, he pursued. Jackie watched them shower. Lieutenant Blue was black with long straight hair and nails. How were things on the surface, she asked. Mike gave her a kiss and details. Spooky as hell out there Jackie. Hope we get back to Earth. Everyone did as yet it was no place to give birth. One day we'll have children, Major Hassel told her. I hope so, the lieutenant replied. Won by both you two, she thought to herself. Her marriage to Mike. About Dave she lied. Never touched her Mike. Dave swore up and down. She had looked too beautiful, in her wedding gown. One of the reasons for colonization of Mars was military. Headquarters for an army in space. Off Earth thousands of soldiers stood guardians should the planet's population erase. Next to a singularity generator's event horizon. You age more slowly than others it's known to wizen. A million to one. Dependent on effects of quick acceleration at one side of a wormhole. They could return to collect compound interest should any institutions they control. It was ultimately a losing game however. 
numbers and wealth had no meaning, on a lifeless desert, never. The fourth rock rocks, commented the lieutenant. Just you and me, replied Major Hassel. He was named, appropriately. Captain Stark left the couple. His mind to wrestle. What in a maker's name are we doing here, he thought. Not for anything that could be paid for or bought. It was run by machine-leaving inhabitants little to do but play endless mind games together. Planet Mars surface was a dangerous place to work on susceptible to weather. Captain Stark poured a stiff drink and chatted aloud. Any of you people want to join me on my psychic cloud? Sure, added a young woman. I'll have whatever you're drinking Captain Stark. The chamber they stood in was a bar. Made for subterranean comfort, warm and dark. We discovered some extremely interesting samples, he commented. Lazily they sipped the comfort till it thus ended. I sure do not want to go out on the surface alone, Dave thought to himself assuredly. Captain Stark what's your name? The girl viewed him fixedly, Phoebe, she replied humoredly. A moon girl from Mars, he thought. Phobus is one of the moons circling them, he'd been taught. Then you are related to Aphrodite, asked Dave. Ares is my father. We were twins then. Phoebe had hinted at her brother, the bigger of two moons circling Mars again. Deimos was the twin. Our other moon. It makes you triplets, said Dave. How do you like the dig, our billets? Keep them, I am on the next replacement out of here, she kept on. Claustrophobia or radiation. We'll die from one or the other here. Only thing worth keeping is our information. The captain thought for a minute. You're in charge of it. Sure beats living in some old tin hut. The girl snapped momentarily to attention, laughing. Specialist Phoebe Meyer sir. She saluted and walked away with her drink to talk with some other men looking at her. He'd noticed her before but this was military. The captain treated her as enlisted saluting back momentarily. Information specialist, he thought to himself. Pretty nice head to store it in too, cute. Everyone inhabiting the dig on Mars was at the bar room. Elevator up, only route. Hope we all make home alive, Dave said to the bartender. There was only one ship on Earth to send her. They had been working on an information link and matter duplication device out on Mars. Made building easier. What about entanglement devices Mike? The other like ours. Major Hassel had become appropriately named. Captain Stark. We are close to a breakthrough, he exclaimed. Spaced out, Dave wondered what their leader could be describing. New element, he thought. Mike evaluated a sample. Thing is halfway between carbon and nitrogen we brought. Impossible but its atomic number is 6.5. There is no such thing. Can't rebuild things alive. As yet their entanglement devices were good only for inanimate substances given material. Half a proton. It was not possible. But sure enough, that was the analysis, not bacterial. We have something unique here, Captain Stark. Dave knew enough to see Renee missed the mark. No half a proton in the nucleus not possible. Yet that is what it indicated measuring its mass. Not six, not seven but six and one half. I have never heard of anything like that. Mike there's got to be a mistake we're reading. The Major rechecked the analyzer. What I'm getting. Atomic mass is 13. Carbon was approximately 12 and nitrogen 14, known. Then that was it, a new element? Both officers stood in wonder. Only here, it had grown. The sample they had returned recently was truly an oddity. Could this produce some useful new commodity? Two up corks one down, said Dave. That's the proton. Maybe an up has no spin. Major Mike thought about it. Fermions, exclusion principle says not so then. It was in a sample they'd brought back to the habitat. They studied for a long time. Both agreed, not possible that. Atomic analyzer constructed with the entanglement devices was cutting edge science. It studied nuclei by deionizing atoms accelerated at detectors outputting an alliance. Still says 6.5 Mike, without electrons and an extra volt and a half deionized. The effects on. If that's an atomic weight it's nothing we've seen on Earth Mike, said Dave. Could just be the device we're using for measurement too. Is it a particle or a wave? 
neither wanted to start in. Elements have one nucleus. Nothing has number between 12 and 14 it's dubious. There has to be some fifth force acting on this, said Mike. Defies, strong nuclear. Dave sat and thought, protons and neutrons three quarks, up or down, what's gloomier? Could be the effects of alcohol. They were stumped. Strangest thing we've found, said Mike, he jumped. Right out of science fiction. They both agreed. Still the new problem remained an anomaly. Problems with our detector's output generator, concluded Major Mike, probably. They stored the sample separately, from the normal others. No radiation, nothing any of the textbooks cover. The strange new element had both the officers stumped. A next question was compounds. What could become combined with it? Was it another form of carbon it sounds? Nitrogen would be a gas. As in the air they breath. Further experimentation would have to be done, before they leave. Something else was contained in that nucleus making its mass an odd number 13. Couldn't split protons or neutrons in half because they're three quarks, come clean. We'll try electrifying it or something, Mike thought. Another element should give us a chemical if sought. Amazing, was that thing alive, asked the captain? In the sense of an active nucleus, Hassel replied, yes. Sure to become monsters, best left alone, threat to all of us. Dave kept his thoughts to himself. Fiction, for certain. Stuck on Mars, best left isolated, on the shelf. On the surface too long Mike. Radiation is dangerous out there without what we wear, spoke Dave. The container, a mysterious element, sat alone as they continued to stare. Let's go back to the bar for one more, Mike advised. Twelve crew in a twenty-man station, he supervised. So much fun, Major Hassel thought to himself. Make mine beer, no hard liquor now. Undermend the air and temperature units on top of the living quarters took know-how. People ran checks on them regularly for a report. It was a small military post kept by a government of sort. Battalion of support personnel to the outpost was around half a thousand soldiers. Major Hassel, lesser lieutenant colonel, commanded it. Gold oak leaves on his shoulders. Higher than a captain. Next in command to the battalion. Five hundred people, back on Earth war medallions. Mars support, space troopers. He held a science degree. Their insignia was rusty red. Material in the sample container was transforming. Picking up electrons, it might be said. Needles to say something diabolical was in the works. Sipping slowly on light beer gave them the burps. Control of the station's power from a nuclear reactor using fusion generators. It ran down the elevator shaft to a control station where operated panels were a separator. A woman sat monitoring the plant above them. Charging mining equipment and surface vehicles. Lights were dim. The runners for traveling long distance above the terrain were sophisticated electronics. They were self-steering guidance systems and piloted through bionics. All it required was the destination and time limits. Different from Earth's, slightly longer by a 25th, minutes. At a crawl or a hundred kilometers an hour they hovered on an atmospheric cushion. Up thrusted by anti-gravitational mechanisms. Helped along by solar conversion of full sun. Unearthly due to lighter gravity with unsuited riders. Rather the runner was its own spacesuit provider. Jackie Blue was true to Major Mike. Dave felt discarded but had no trouble with women. They generally flocked to him, anyways. His rank had a prestige, it was given. So the trouble was overpopulation mostly. Too many people wanted to raise big families with no incomes, remotely. Out on other planets raising children was out of the question and strict regulations. Even with matter manufacturing devices standing room was scarce for any nations. You either built higher or dug deeper with no privacy. Other side of a wall was the nearest neighbor and rivalry. Crime and thuggery still thrived. Men became more dependent on machines than people. Transportation and thinking were left to computerization the legal evil. You fell into their niche or became isolated in solitary confinement. It left people on Mars committed to that assignment. The new nucleon they'd discovered left them stumped. A different form of carbon base. But it was the kind of thing that had brought them. Discovery for most part the case. 
Could it form life and multiply to become a living species? Life had different meanings, a description sees. It wasn't a proton or neutron and still had a strong nuclear bond with half the mass. It wasn't quarks but a new form of primal matter. Neither was it of nitrogen gas. On the frozen surface it was alone stable. In heated conditions not. Neither officer realized what they had got. The Mars moons cast eerie shadows on the surface. The new element reacted to heat. The container cracked. This was unobserved by the men preoccupied, tired and beat. In the bar, Phoebe danced with another of the girls. Moves exaggerated under light gravity their rhythmic swirls. Nitrogen and oxygen began to combine with the new form of carbon they had discovered. Mike and Dave watched the two girls dance. Distraction imagined them nakedly and uncovered. A stray particle of iron oxide kicked the compound. It grew exponentially, creating a pathway it found. Out of the laboratory into the bar up a man's leg the freaky new fluid flowed. The crewman reacted violently to it. Turning bright red he began to grow bumps that showed. Convulsively he collapsed in a pool dark as ink. Absolutely black, the form turned round, starting to shrink. Moving at girls dancing, Dave yelled to Major Mike, what the hell, look out. Major Hassel poured beer on it. It went away, short another crewman, no doubt. Now there were only 11 station members left. I knew we shouldn't have brought it back to the lab, said Mike at best. Men died all the time on Mars. Some committed suicide by taking of their pressure helmets. They were heads, all of them, and exploded. Drunk and stoned did it overwhelm us. Captain Dave was always amazed the people kept coming back. It was a desolate place. And now an alien attack. Enough brew and the hideous compound shrunk to the size of an original nucleus. A crewman gone. Mike returned to the lab, seeing a cracked container on which he focused. A monster, the size of an atomic nucleus, alive. It killed one man. Tempted them, get to the runners and ride. Hover vehicles for surface travel transported two crew each with contained environment. Robotic arms were used for moving, reaching, drilling and sampling judgment. Referred to as a runner, their altitude was limited. The thin atmosphere with little or no resistance it exhibited. Mike, Jackie, Dave and Phoebe suited up for an expedition leaving seven crewmen behind. No one knew what form it'd take or where it may strike next. Elevators began to climb. They got in two of the runners. Powered out onto the crater. Slow, sloping rise ended on a plateau later. They returned to a spot Major Hassel collected the strange element from minerals. There is no trouble out here, Mike told Jackie. It is a hundred below at intervals. The plan was to do further chemical analysis. Study its conditions before effects of heat that were analogous. Too many casualties. We can't lose another person Major, said the lieutenant. I know it dear, Mike replied to his wife. Captain Stark find if it is inclement. Dave thought a minute. Let's heat it up out here. He pointed a laser at the sample spot and fired a shot near. Phoebe and Lieutenant Blue piloted the runners while Dave and Mike operated its arms. There were no weapons only scientific instruments, drill, grinder, lasers and alarms. The manipulative function were also those of hands. They could pick up rocks and turn them over on commands. No reactions to altered carbon atoms here said Dave to Mike, it's dormant. Major Hassel evaluated what he'd seen. You know it is heat that is important. In reality it was oxygen which was scarce on Mars. Slight traces in a depleted atmosphere, runners floated on like cars. Get back to the shelter, said Phoebe. Got a weather front approaching us fast. Indeed giant dust clouds gathered on the horizon. It appeared the blow would last. Let's make for to the shelter, ordered Mike. Not reaching conclusions there was no knowing about weather strike. Fast-moving mechanical crew carriers were back to the underground containment quickly. Lock to the surface dome opened on instructions from the specialist. Dust grew thickly. In a few moments it became too thick to see your hands. Inside again they were safe behind shelter lands. I hope that thing hasn't messed with any of the other crew, voiced Captain Dave. They called the elevator up. All seemed as when they had left the underground cave. The Major and three crew descended back to quarters. 
On arriving he took a head count. Everyone followed orders. Strong nuclear force is what holds the nuclease together. Carbon has six proton and neutrons. The new nucleon half the mass of a proton, approximately, make it a new carbon. The isotope 13, found on Earth had seven neutrons. One on Mars had 6.5, is what that was. It killed someone. Gathering electrons under ectothermic conditions. Forming with water. Unless kept below freezing it formed dangerous compounds leaving living cells to slaughter. We've got 11 crewmen left, Captain Stark reported. Seven of them men and six women boarded. A nucleus of the cell remained dormant and hidden after devouring a crewman at the bar. Mysterious half a proton wasn't found on Earth and only reacted above freezing thus far. Once their helmets were off inside the domed bubble protection they were more comfortable on inspection. Only eleven of us left, reflected Mike. We're going to have to look for the missing sample. Dave reflected on it. Followed the course of gravity. Down they'd have to gamble. From where the lost crewman had been standing. There was a visible impact puncturing the floor landing. Now it's part of Mars, said Captain Stark. No telling how deep the puncture extended. It seemed to have taken one of them with it. And without a trace, it had ended. Gone from a sample to supersized cell of some kind. Then back to the nucleus of an atom. It remained undefined. Next scheduled rotation from Mars was six months. If successful it would transfer six crew. No one could stand the wait. What would the new monster lurking about? No one knew. Food and an entanglement device was not items from home. Fruit and meat were not exactly what they had known. Dehydrated, far from freshly prepared, meals ready to eat, best described it. Grown, prepared food from seeds brought from Earth under a dome where they'd sit. Still, radiation was very harsh, dome or not. Direct sunlight killed vegetation. Synthetic ultraviolet, what they'd got. Advancement in material replication came a long way. Pork patties and peanut butter, Major Hassel groaned. Captain Dave felt the same. Cursed MREs, they'd utter. An entire crew favored their own Mars groan. Trade existed, not like on Earth. Transport limited what they owned. I like people that do stuff, don't just dream about it, said Mike looking at the station. It had become constructed more than a hundred years ago by America, a nation. We can't take chances with the menace stated the major. When I report the loss of a man it'll condemn us. The purpose of the post was exploration. Isolation should a catastrophic nuclear war start. There'd been some. Not enough to contaminate an entire planet for greater part. Exotic medications are what many leaned on. They had watches on shifts. In event conclusions became foregone. The outpost even had a small chapel of sort. Though there was no chaplain at the time. Captain Stark felt spiritualistic times. Remembering a few prayers he felt sublime. There was evidence of habitable exoplanets. Unreachable, observation confirmed civilization other than us. Proven in biblical research, men experienced divine visitations. God made man, a fact. A holy trinity lay in the creation of protons and neutrons. Cork pairs, how they act. Cosmic consciousness was felt keenly among the stars. Multi-universe existed in theory, unproven in hours. Interstellar travel, limitations of light held grasp on solid objects. Particles could stretch. Theoretically from one side of the visible universe to the other without the catch. The problem, moving hardware at sub-light speed. Established instant communication satisfied its need. Signal unbounded by electromagnetic waves. Literally instant it was a stretched particle. Digital, in nature. Up or down, dot dash, encoded, messaged and a real article. It gave signaling an advantage over light's spectrum. Transference of information unlimited by speed of light. Science fiction becoming fact. The way had become paved for a new information age. Thank God for our matter replicators, voiced Dave out loud. Bad food is my rage. Major Mike ordered him to, stop bitching. The thing that had crawled out of the laboratory was too bewitching. Sergeant Craig Rayferty, 
The crewman killed by the giant cell from the sample container. There was nothing left as a corpse. It appeared he was ingested, no brainer. The huge cell shrank to the size of a point, puncturing downward straight through the mantle disappearing unvoiced. Major Hassel listed the men missing. There were no remains. There had been eleven witnesses. Under domed surface, above quarters, three square miles of support businesses. Air production, water storage and climate control. Septic system beneath the living space, a wide deep hole. Well planned and excavated. Mining had become a big industrial drive proving worthy. Toward expanding the existing colonies on the planet. Effort worth the journey. Getting material back to Earth was informational. Possibility of new element classification became investigational. One more add to the periodic tables Mike, asked Captain Dave. Not yet, he replied. A glitch being the missing crewman, Ray Ferdy. We'll name it after the man who died. The Major become more weary about returning. Anything from the surface below to the lab, they were learning. Still the Nucleon had him bugged. Quarks were in triplets. Neutron mass half? Not possible it was neither. But it still added to it. The strong force binding that. And added energy to it. Thirteen electrons, six and a half protons? Temperature had effect. Nuclear weak are photons. The supercell at large. Compressed into a center of an atom, getting hungry. Craig Rayford he wasn't dead. He was hiding in a nucleus. He'd become one among three. Up quark in the proton, poor boy. The creature needed more. Predatory in nature, it formed a molecule beneath the floor. Any place there was water the monster lurked. Formed from the primordial past. Billions of year ago oceans flowed. It had remained top of a food chain before it crashed. When the water was lost, it froze and became dormant. Only a single cell. It was at one time large and important. We can't be beaten by a beast, Mike blasted. We'll synthesize a laser weapon for it. Sure it'd require high technology. Single cells can be elusive, hard to hit. They sensed Craig, a man the monster took, lost. They had to find and isolate it. Discover its nature at any cost. It was a true chameleon of an entity. From proton and neutrons to room-sized cell. It hid in the subsurface, lurked on the floor. Simply appearing in a room it began to swell. Taking on electrons and binding with other atoms. It formed its molecular formula as Mars' early phantoms. It was and could be anywhere. Gives me the creeps, voiced Mike. Rayferty's remains. There was no body. It had simply vanished into the floor down to the septic tank. Damn, voiced Jackie, I'm scared to flush a toilet. Things reach right up and snatch you, could not foil it. Major Hassel thought about how he'd list Sergeant Rayferty. Missing duty, absent crewman? For now he was just gone with no trace. That glob had digested a human. Mike we've got to trap it suggested the captain. You're right, replied the major. People seem to make it happen. Now wait a minute, insisted Dave. Are you saying we set someone as bait? Major Mike thought a minute. I'm glad you volunteered. Stand by the water and wait. He hadn't remembered Operations Mission having priority. I'm on it, Stark pronounced boldly. On your authority. We've got to fashion you defense, said Major Mike. Concentrated high energy beam. Dave moved away. Specialist Meyer and Lieutenant Blue saw the plan as a team. We can do that with the replicators, said ingenious Jackie. She didn't like Captain Dave at risk and wasn't happy. Go on with it, said Phoebe, information handler. Draw specifications, energy required. It was going to be dangerous, Captain Stark knew it. He had seen it eat Rayfordy. Mars casualties were becoming a numerous count. Hundreds of people landed on Mars. Returns what it's about. Getting off the rock. Docking with the transport in orbit was a skilled task left to computer. Phoebe wanted it more than anyone. Some nearly adapted. It'd never sweet her. In her style, she programmed hardware. Advances in software and quantum devices came close to instant there. Bait, trap and kill it, stated Mike. Captain Stark your mission. Find it. Dave had figured as much. 
I'd suspect water reservoir above us or septic system to fit. I'll scout it out major. When will my weapon be ready? Jackie was working at the replicator on something deadly. Major Mike guided her on their plan. A pulse, generating a billion volts in one shot. Information manager Phoebe described power sources. Nuclear one we got. Biological warfare begun, a dozen lives at stake. The mess in the bar was cleaned marking a tiny puncture, no mistake. Next to the scene stood the bartender Phil, Corporal Roth, practiced and talented. In ways he had answers to questions. Each looked at evidence they'd hunted. Diseases on Mars were much like those common ones on Earth. There was always some missing link that was of cryptic worth. Cut to the chase and stop messing with our minds, said Dave standing in the bar room. It's going to be lurking near a sewer. Need to retrieve Ray for the org zoom. Phoebe brought a shovel, start digging corporal, she told Phil. Outranking him by a stripe both specialists still. Need a drill or grinder to get through the floor, said Phil. You're right, it's below us. He took a broom, swept carefully around where Craig vanished thus. Most frightening thing I've witnessed, Specialist Meyer. Everyone prepared for what trapping the glob could require. It'll always grind on us that Ray Ferdy is dead, said Mike resolutely. Maybe not. There's always the outside chance. There's no proof yet. Going on what we got. With no body, there is no proof, keep going. Watch what is ahead of you. At the speed of traffic, headlights glowing. Dave had the jitters. You don't make Major standing around. Get a foot down. As they hit an elevator, down, light gravity increased. Floating to middle of town. In the center everything pieced. As though it was there to fit. The conglomerate made a nice launcher. One hand held it. You hit the nail on the head, said Hassel. He pointed it and thanked his partner Jackie. If this doesn't kill it nothing would. A billion volts a shot. Just one chance we got. Dave get the targets ready and stand down range. Captain Stark frowned headed down an alley exchange. He returned to Major Hassel who handed him the laser weapons power source. Put holes in it Dave. Fen out, turn here. He pointed to knobs ending the course. Dave cut the targets half. In less than a millisecond gone. So fast as no time to think or become totally withdrawn. Nothing to do but kill bacteria thought Stark. In way he was right. That's a war. Starting on setting 9 the captain took up position by a water tank store. 300 kilotons of frozen water ice lay as cold solid. When the heat source activated the water source plotted. We'd at least need DNA tags, for Rayferty. The sergeant, along every crewman coded. We've got to do more sampling on quarters and personal artifacts. They so did. Major Mike linked communication with Captain Stark. I'm activated, he said. Want to see a shot before we embark? Targets were not enough wanted something more solid against. See what flies off. The side of a mountain 10 kilometers, suggested Major Hassel. Car size boulder, not soft. Dave aimed his pointer. A mind link, black and white. Activated the cannon, heavy as an oak bat upright. Blinding bright light, the rock exploded. In the atmosphere it made a muffled explosion. Target, great to have defense, voiced the captain. His jaw fell open. Take if it were vehicles nothing be left of an inhabitant. Overkill, said Dave. I say setting three in alignment. A ten setting could crack the mantle, Dave worried. The thing is at close range. He'd imagine what it'd be standing next to a boulder ten thousand meters, change. With a crackle, the link went dead as he looked ahead. Now he knew the thing had lock on him, as nothing was said. Tension mounted above quarters were giant storage tanks for water enables. Bigger than that was a system below surface that drained into subsurface tables. Takes a lot to get going, down to the lower layers. Ending in the excavation to pour a strata chosen long ago by surveyors. The strange life formed of a new type carbon embryo, ruling Martian oceans once. All bacterial, as single-celled forms. A third of the red planet's surface staged its hunts. Now it was just Captain Stark and the tiny nucleus. Elusive and invisible, it traveled in and through us. 
disguised as a man at eight, the supersized cell taunted Dave to touch it. No, he thought, it isn't the sergeant. It's an apparition, a trick. Fast, he made the hit. What appeared as Craig exploded into a million little globs. The pieces reformed. Dave checked the power knobs. Space suits required, under the shielded camp surface. Splattered like a water balloon. Pressurized less punctured synthetic bubble held a breathable atmosphere room. Semicircular containment half sphere one mile diameter. Temperature minus 100 degrees, not for an amateur. I've got it Mike, Dave yelled excitedly. Made a mess that looks like frozen plasma. Come out here and check it out. The Major suited up and came to the surface panorama. You sure hit something Captain, Major Mike said. Whatever we do let us not track it to the shelter bed. Carefully they descended the elevator back to the bar. Amazingly Craig Grayfordy was alive. Laying on the floor at the same place the glob had vanished with him. He did survive. Truly a Martian miracle. They all thanked God. Were Jesus to join them he wouldn't view it as being odd. Craig was cloned by a megacell appearing to Captain Stark before he killed it. Residue from the explosion still contained the strange nucleonic half-proton. It didn't fit. Here was the missing crewman, still alive. Difficult pieces to puzzle together where the organism thrived. Had Mars once been a habitat suspended animation of some kind occurred. The big bad bacteria could simulate anything it ingested. Seems it could gobble a man, that assured. What happened to me, stunned, asked Sergeant Traferty. He stood naked as if nothing'd happened in reality. Dave and Mike stood amazed. You were ingested by a kind of monster, said Mike. Captain Stark handed him a uniform, examining him visually and touch alike. Something assumed you. A sample we brought back from the surface. Craig thought about it, remembering nothing of purpose. A big amoeba, Major Hassel poured beer on it. Shrank into the floor. It appeared to have taken you with it too. You weren't visible anymore. The sergeant felt functional, remembering not, about the metallic fluid. I hate to say I don't remember a darn thing. It sounds stupid. Anything can happen on the red rock. It was begun to suppose left to author. Let it continue to be fiction. Anything comes to mind, spill it out on paper as an offer. Appealing only to an imagination, subject to Twilight Zone. That one can envision could mean it possible in tone. Play to the media. Only to whom would listen? A platoon on a lost rocky planet. In a solar system. Part of a galaxy consisting of billions of like places to stand in it. Full of stellar nebulas formed from exploded giant stars. The only place in the universe man had landed, Mars. Not to say the moon, where we stood. A quarter million miles, well and good. Slim biosphere of planet Earth is all we are for what it is worth. Long time it stood. Four billion revolutions around our own sun. The oxygen content of the atmosphere gained then sank as life begun. Carboniferous life grew from oceans a few hundred thousand years ago to land. Radiation became shielded for photosynthesis to begin above surface at hand. Animal life thrived on high oxygen level. Large insect than dinosaur. Diversification based on natural selection was special. A single supercell capable of cloning complex multicellular life. Major Hassel reflected. Life seemed to have developed on the red planet in a primal sense they detected. Certainly not to a point it did in Earth's Cambrian. When complex life evolved in the ocean like a champion. Twelve people on a lonely outpost. An exploration mission to another planet. That's the way it had worked out. Cold and dangerous without protection we planet. We've got to be more careful bringing samples to the lab, said Major Mike. Captain Stark agreed, that plan's bad. There've been too many wars, said the Major. Men were on Mars over a hundred years. That an entire nation could become decimated was one of the ongoing fears. Looking around at the station, this was one American nation. Different ethnic backgrounds but the same basic situation. Their mission, survival and exploration. Advancement of science, protection of culture. There was much to be done and maintained around the station and substructure. Like any building's heated plumbing needs liquid water. Parts were no problems with replicators they brought her. 
elements were gathered from everywhere on the planet. As part of mining operations, fed into storage grinders, filtered and refined, they developed many innovations, fuel, docking crafts, runners and pressure suits. Programmable replicators assemble them in fast one atom boots. Molecular assembly a new chemistry, iron, steel or copper, even platinum or gold. Problem of fusion had become solved. Creation of heavy nuclei, alchemy of old. It was real in this era used in practical purposes. A must have for frictionless applications and contact with surfaces. There still existed heat problems. With fuel and activators they were much reduced. Particularly atmospheric entry, instant communication a reality, gravity hadn't been seduced. A part of creation containing a singularity, commented Mike. Dave replied, Major it lacks clarity. Major Hassel explained, part of containment, we may have it solved. Problem they had was in a warping time. From isolated points of infinite density they evolved. Was only speculative science fiction. Miracles can exist. All around you. Every day of life they arrive by diction. Think we're seeing some light, responded Captain Stark. The containment generator had been down the hall all along. The answer to a prayer, a separator. It had become an invention for life to lengthen, give in, that was their purpose and to what was to achieve, the mission. Get your mind off entanglement devices, Mike commented. Be here till we're dead. So this was it. This was good. Scientific method establishes truth, so it is said. Let us get real. How did they do this? Time travel it suggests, and how? It sank into the back of Jackie's head. Must be something I ate or said, Captain Dave thought to himself. A civilization's journey. That time can become past or easily drawn. In terms of human evolution worry. A selected few in their knowledge I'd collect. It lead into an advanced civilization then. I would bet. Lieutenant Jackie Blue Eyes looking back at you. Deep pools of ember making contact. That anyone lives that long, she said. Meaning, if Mike were dead in fact. So they plotted on. Lyrically written in song or stories. If we all get back? Dave kept thinking looking for keys. An octave with strings stretching back to the beginning of time. What's required? Same vibrating note. Extending out to infinity. If one infinite exists or becomes desired. They form rings. A good explanation of phase transition. Dancing back to our beginning as some apparition. Alert. It took Mike a long time to wake up the fact they might not be coming back. Things happen. A visitation. Angels. They can do that. Interdimensional beings. That. Knock on our door. Mike's hears it with the latest incident. And that new nucleon thing had to be coincident. Only on Mars. Why not on Earth? Perhaps you're not alone in this ceaseless universe. Perhaps not it's all being rehearsed. Just as we speak awaiting appearance reverse. Back the universe up then go to hit the rerun why not? Putting into it every ounce of energy that we have got. How Lazarus was raised from the dead. Dead on right perhaps. Who's pushing the buttons? Visitation of sorts come in varying degrees though, including discussions. Premonition is required to walk. Doesn't say make it. Before you're started out come up with the hypothesis that fit. It fit for Noah. Why build the thing? We'll return in one civilization, to collect us warning. Flat real or the Earth's tectonics match into it giving him for a warning? Premonition is real. What you're looking at took place before. Mortal limitations for warning it may store. Must have been an hallucination, Sergeant Rayferty reflected to Phoebe Meyer. She was blunt in replying, Craig you vanished. Reappeared short your attire. The sergeant noted the uniform he was wearing had changed. How did it happen? He asked feeling a bit mentally deranged. As we figure a sample from the laboratory liquefied. It became alive engulfing you. Exactly what had happened involved a fifth force in physics, nucleon that was new. We are going to stop bringing samples back to the habitat, stated Major Mike. Direct order, simple as that. Why did it react to spilling beer on it, asked Captain Dave. Too drunk, Mike said. All of us, Dave agreed. 
Major Hassel helped Lieutenant Jackie get into bed. Intercourse wasn't forbidden. Encouraged to those married. Childbearing was restricted off-planet regulation carried. Black hole manufacturing and containment. It was the future. Everything else passed. Aging quickly, those without the device, this, controlled event horizon, cast. Genuinely, a time machine, it meant power and wealth. Warping time near the generator suspending animation and health. You could wait for the cure. Biological warfare was threatening the planet Earth. For any amount of money you were still a target. Useless dead, what it's worth. Why reproduction was limited in that time. It was more than a game. That was not so simple as easily fitting a rhyme. Runs back to a census, in biblical times. That everything is counted. Tax is generally an excuse in politics. Science is labeling or identification mounted. Becoming bacterial who would care to count that? And give them each a pet name? Not the kinds of warfare we want to win at. Lives saved, acts affecting human life. Quite a swarm comes to a billion. Do viruses have populations? They may decimate the military or civilian. Your pet beetle is named Ringo, far as that goes. Some of us choose not to become a number is why. Obscurity preferred ones suppose. Makes you less of a target. If they have got your number, it may be up friend. It is why the suggestion to keep friends close and enemies closer than. There is no need to count and identify numerically. Though scientists would like to, some with fervor. A few others hysterically. Give up then and resign. Emotion on a scale of 1 to 10. Measurable, you bet. Take our old sliding scales. Each increment a click. You are landing. Get ready, set. Prefer meaning over precise measurement, regarding people. Until it is touching down on the right spot or steeple. Some kind of split. All of it. Keep dividing until you've a primal factor. What point that is no longer divisible. Reference to Max Planck, not an actor. Keep going because there is a point at which we stop. The time or length. Oh God give us strength. Are you above or below top? I think there is a screw loose somewhere said Captain Dave. Any suggestions Phil poured him another scotch on the rocks asking more questions Dave didn't reply. He sipped the drink. Another female officer sat beside him. Lieutenant Jackson sir tell me what you think her name was Mary. Dave recognized her as a fellow explorer in the expedition. They'd landed together on the same transport involved in a mission, scientific research and military defense of the planet Earth. They were on the same rotation. After two years, staying had no worth. All agree nice place to visit, not to live there without support. Thousands of people were involved at home to keep an outpost fort. An information link from the third rock out to Mars was vital. Habitats on the fourth planet are vulnerable. Terraforming attempt yet to be final. How short are we, Lieutenant Dave asked her. My count's 99 souls, she replied. Meant they were scheduled. Return to Earth as time enrolls. Don't hold your breath, the captain advised her. On Mars they'd adapted sleeping patterns. Working shifts, as longer days were. Strange as hell what happened to Ray Ferti he discussed with Mary. I saw it too she replied. Boom. He is just sitting there. Scary the reappearance after vanishing through the floor. Unbelievable. The apparition, a globular cell the size of a human being was inconceivable. The communications electronics operation instructions. It is your analog. Time vary features for positive identification. Keep a copy of any log. It will hurt when you are hit. That will get you every time. Want to go directly to the middle. Get to the side and stagger your line. And what's the lady have asked Phil? Finished the double. One more Dave stared directly at her. Never isolate it with Mike and more you mean Lieutenant Blue said Mary. That's it replied Dave. You know for everything we've been through. The way it was. I forgave what for tomorrow then he signaled with a glass and tipped smile. Mary joined the line at the bar. It was progressing and looking versatile. We'll take runners out with artificial lights and put on skates. Knowing that for a project and seeing what getting the know-how takes. It was agreed for the following night. Jet-powered skis, driving on underway. Pushing beneath tons of water ice. 
a glacier, on top of what one sits all day. Kicking up the tail like a hydroplane on a smooth surface drink. 400 meters round and three changeover zones, blink, so, just race them around the flat oval and touch down said they flatly. Forced into a bay and landed. Ended in full stop. Not too badly. To get in and get to a stop took planning. In and out quite gladly. But now get her closer to the air look, shock kicks it all quite madly. With head count back at 12 and a mystery monster splattered on the surface. Privates. Johnson, Smith, Clover, Williams and Grace, the rest in service. Not all by choice a few were given decisions less desirable. So choosing the space colony over destinies on Earth, unlikable. Two men, three women sexes were evenly matched for space duty unprejudiced. Four officers, eight enlisted comprised the staff, half non-specialists. It kept the place running. Each of the crew had a station. All answered to the military, everyone dedicated to serving their nation. Major Hassel, in charge with Captain Stark second in command of the outpost. Battalion of support on Earth backing them numbered hundreds, note, privileged in the sense of being pioneers. They all held an honor, respected and admired as yet. None became another unfortunate goner. Rotation off of Mars came as a supply mission about every two years. There was a lot of time. Private Clover talked to Julia Grace in tears. It's all right, Gloria said Julia. I know how you feel. Our mission. Staying is tough on us all. Knew when we signed up. Hard decision. Privates Bill Williams and Don Smith. The low men on the chain of command. We shall always be here. Bill told Don. Staying by popular demand. Don agreed. Replicator food is not always that bad. Got to keep it running. Truth was, there were always tasks people were shunning. Privates Williams and Johnson had affinity for one another. It was status. As taskmasters they were left with cleanup and operation of apparatus. Bill and Don handled the drudgery sharing physical contact. Male and female crew members who had much the same government contract. Just another job plain and simple. A long to-do list included clothing. Simple tasks like straightening out shambles toward others felt loathing. From folding socks and everything that contacted the skin. Replication was the simple process. Dispose the old. Push a button to begin. Inanimate objects were not a problem. Food products were. Simulating a plant. Meat came close but lacked the natural taste vein would supplant. The same gripe. From top the chain to bottom, including any labor. Who is to perform it? What is our motivations and incentive neighbor? Riding on runners, they plan races to choose who got off the rock first. As usual they'd all been in a hurry to get to Mars. Going home the reverse. What waited them wasn't better, only different. That is all. The chore of keeping blogs, making maps and tracking activity recall. So, it was better than no job at all. It kept them busy not bored. Stagnation seemed worse than some chores. Activity was a cure it stored. Bill asked Joanne, do you think sex is the biggest thrill or just another one? She thought a minute, another one. Still it's lots of fun. Production of life in a laboratory had yet to become an accomplished matter. Though much work was done, only enlivening molecular items would scatter. Given the elements and flowing electrons, compounds were formed. Diamond to gigantic in synthetic form to replication conformed. Bill held a 60 carat seam bell rock in his hand and gave it to Private Johnson. Be hard to swallow, she said. Might be ammunition for a cannon. Williams agreed. Miracles of science. Sure makes life easier to us. They continued on with their assignments. Work was a fuss. Craig seemed alright. Officers wanted to study the new cell fervor. Let's look at it out on the surface where it stays frozen as an observer suggested Captain Stark. Mike agreed, no bringing back air heat and water activated the creature. Risky and dangerous it was clear. The disposal of used or unwanted matter was also a new technology aboard. Vaporizing solids to become discharged above the surface and stored. Oan took the rock bill gave her and tossed it into the vaporizer. Convert to carbon dioxide. 
Discharged as atmosphere did not face her. Ready for the runner race tonight, Williams asked Johnson with expectation. Sure, she replied. I'll be docking home first. By my information, they continued to look forward to the competition on the surface. Much was absently missed from the home planet by those in service. Climate and atmosphere in the containment dome was controlled. Pressure kept it such. Without accident it was safe wherever one strolled. They set three real teams of four people for the racing event. Winning crew got first pick of spots when a transport back to Earth was sent. Great for ice skates. 100 meter dash, each passing batons to the next. Major, Captain and both Lieutenants won that big event in Perplex, how they became brass commented Private Grace disappointedly, we'll get there said Gloria, Pilgrank again commenting pointedly. Don and Bill, two privates, complained, still bottom of the ladder they'd be last to leave. Then left with cleanup duties what's setter, nowhere to go but up said Bill, lots of company agreed on, single file, they waited on elevators back down below ground they were on, came down on levy complained private Smith, main to Williams replied, requested an off-planet assignment continued on, undenied it was what they came for. Adventure, escape and wishes to explore. Our that seemed better than sitting around home. It becomes a terrible bore. Back at the bar all relaxed, waiting on Phil to fill up the glasses for everyone. Champagne made losing less disappointing. Excellent next to none. Tiny bubbles without much of a hangover. What could be better? Everyone was anxious about orders to leave, following it to a letter. Phoebe received a vital message via the instant communication link. First replacement transport launch, she told Dave as he filled his drink. It would take two months to reach them. Three ships lifting off, weeks apart. New commanders would be first arriving to play the part. Space elevator of carbon fiber cable extended to a docking station. War waged on Earth leaving parts decimated. A bad situation. So Mars was a good place to be. Controlled population was an issue. Communist blocks made it mandatory. Free countries required couples have permits to. So, in ways, the free world was restricted, including United States of America. Birth control was enforced. Partial reason for wars being numerical. A planet could support so much. A sustained population resulted. When countries disagreed conflicts arose, the issues unconsulted, it insulted women's rights and ability, that governments prohibited families, the fight for space and power to support colonies forced calamities, then thermonuclear explosions made things much more worse, parts of the planet herself were uninhabitable due to radiation's curse, part of Europe was no more, to see a world without working disappointed. Pleasure with no pain caused society to become enjoyed, because they exist only relative to one another the primary reason. Life is not all enjoyable or perfectly round. Summer or winter depend on season. Premonition and reincarnation were something Sergeant Craig experienced. To these sensations in extreme forms, he felt to become recipient. Escaping as a victim left voids in his memory from where it engulfed him. To awakening again, naked on the subterranean barroom floor and you're on second transport back home Captain Stark told him, we're just as pooped as you are about it. I know I got one of them Craig looked at Dave, I'd miss this place except for that sort of nemesis Mars appeared a dead planet that once had flowing wet water to miss. It had once been abundant, with oceans which single sub life could hunt. Engulf might be a better description, locomotion being what it would want. Pushed in liquid surrounding, collision was inevitable of course. Lightening with rainwater and vapor for life to have its source. Spark amino acids causing covalent bonding and couplers in chain. A rarity not guaranteed long-lasting success. Stopped by freezing with no rain. It started then stopped. Dormant in suspended animation so to speak. Left to nature. The force of creation frozen solid nuclear weak. To a point, life began but did not get nearly so far as the Earth. Lack of electric fields controlling radiation preventing land giving birth. Photosynthesis existed only in controlled conditions of contaminant covers. No place to raise families. An inhospitable place to lovers. 
Private Plover, Grace Smith and Williams talked to Oan about the sergeant. Does Traferty seem different? The girls saw him with no garment. Sorry, you're last to get to go home. I got time in grade. Means I'm on the second replacement. We're all stuck with a mess. It made space elevator required pressure suits. Each crew member's custom. Name plate identified them along with helmets. All some. Be sure to hug a tree for me. Gloria told Oaan what I miss most about home. That are good looking guys. Mike, Dave, Craig, Phil and Don all we've known. Lieutenant Jackson eyed the goop suspiciously. Mary, a Martian, not. Only that thing Dave got. He tapped her on the shoulder. Transgender or what not surprised she responded. No sir born this way woman I'll stay so they got along. She acted masculine for a lady in her way. Trade with Gloria then and supervised the replacement Dave suggested. As you wish she replied. There were a lot of details needing to be connected. In the transfer of the base. Roots and positioning were crucial. Where samples came from and laboratory results became useful. Debris made space travel dangerous. 20 to 40,000 miles an hour. Faster than high speed bullets. Impacting stationary, lots of power. In atmosphere small objects disintegrate. Without it is metal on metal. Rock and ice on iron nickel. Multiple objects becoming lethal. The consummate curious creature. We've stared up at stars for millennia wondering, what are they? What purposes do we have? The question's thundering. It seems so unreachable. Most of it is, for observation only. Admiration and praise wanted suppose. Emcity, makes us feel lonely. Truly it is. Distance so huge in terms of light's limitations physically. To civilizations like our own out of the question even optimistically. Written history would eclipse in a time it would take to reach them. Where did this begin and when will it end? From what did we stem? Singularities it seems. Points of infinite density. All having the same origin. What extends beyond that undetectable? The universe we are in. Mathematical constructs indicate extra dimensions to exist as well. All becoming rather meaningless to us in this reality. Ideas we sell. Fit in a creator and method. That is science and religion, questions unanswerable. Hence belief, there it ends. To ask is admirable. Hypothesis being, there was a beginning. Data exists to substantiate it. Seems necessity to mankind. Truth and belief we constantly fight to fit. Trinity of quarks, proton and neutrons. Father, son and spirit fit. Creation, annihilation of particles. Emerging from nowhere, a tiny bit. Incenses were situated by our creator. For what purpose? Perplexing. Death of course, our ending. Conception, the beginning, quite vexing. Problems with red rockets and parachutes led to space elevator transport. A much safer way to lower and raise objects to orbits of sort. A centrifugally tethered ladder mounted to a docking station above atmosphere. A dozen kilometers high, it was about a one hour climb here. Cable to an orbital platform, rising through the domed habitat cover. Geared motor transported people and supplies to channel another, to space and down to the surface, eliminating bodies burning up in gas. Like meteors, spacecraft face a problem. Safe ascent and isn't at last. Docking transports transferred cargo and crew, adding acceleration to cargo. Eliminating the need of ships passing through atmosphere to go to the surface and back into orbit. Content delivery only, no need for container. Weight of ships being more than they deliver, no brainer. Applying particularly to people or perishables who instant matter assembler. Solid objects only, not living beings, unfortunately, to look at her. Ideas float weightlessly, of course. Whereas solid objects do not. To get down from and up to space. Without rockets intentional block. Stick to four forces Mike told Dave. Stay away from a fifth. It's liquor still at the bar. Don't touch it Major Dave replied quicker. It's a new form of carbon we found. If there's more of it frozen leave it there. It was a strange anomaly. A new life species to share. Precious doesn't describe it. Home planet.
the Mother Earth herself, as rarity of similar celestial bodies are realized in what nature is dealt. Patiently awaiting rotation they missed family members from home, mostly the people who raised us, their memories, Gloria let it know. Peas in our past, agreed Julia. Certainly in the vastness of everything? Something similar to any point in history exists, another being. Completely unreachable and requiring faith or conviction, there is. Possibly frightening, because not all of that is pleasant. What it says? Missions required a year journey. Six months travel time each way. Including two year stay. That's three Earth years total from today. If one were to plan it beginning to end. A portion of the lifetime, start to stop, one enlistment. You think is that time in service slash you got. What came from Mars stays on Mars. That's what Major Hessel told. Julia continued talking to Gloria. Private Grace. Glover and Johnson on hold. The last ones to climb the space elevator with Lieutenant Jackson. Gong home after turning the base over. All clean with floors waxen. If one of those monsters were to reach her and reproduce there's no telling, continued Private Grace. Be extremely aware, contamination, yelling. They all wished she'd settle down, but the threat was a real one. Witnessing what it had done to the sergeant, positively no fun. Welcome to the heavens, commented Private Bill Williams quietly to Joanne. Looking at the night sky, the Milky Way stood panoramically to scan. Makes me feel small and alone, she replied studying calmly. An enormity of it all stood out from their perspective shining back oddly. Three times the age of planet Earth, it began. As an enormous explosion. Annihilation of matter and antimatter in vast proportion set in motion. And yet merely a bubble. Not in my lifetime, Bill continued. He burped. The champagne set in. Bottom of a station pecking order ruled. They sat on the deck to the space elevator rising through the containment. Where ships from home docked in orb to unload their shipment. Cannot wait for the replacements, continued Bill, serenely. Their mission on Mars was nearing completion, looking at each other, dreamily. Don and Gloria joined them. Great night, for star watching in the cover. Earth was visible, quarter billion miles away, off the horizon. This just isn't a place to settle, said Private Smith. It's too damn cold. Gloria agreed, crazy to raise kids here. No chance to grow old. Oh fuck me dead, said Bill. Captain Stark approached the party. Sir. They stood at attention. Dave knew he didn't fit the enlisted group smartly. All saluted, watching the tether extend upward in the thin atmosphere. Already knew but still had to ask, what's going on here? Staring at the galaxy sir. Waiting to go home. Right up to the transport. Williams momentarily held Johnson's hand after saluting Dave in short. Just an affirmation they'd be boarding together when a time came. Lieutenant Jackson's staying to supervise the final transfer game. Always a man in charge, the captain let them know. Mary's supervising. He looked at the remains of what was left, not surprising. Things made a mess. Let's try to get it and put it all in the disposal. Vaporize whatever's traceable. Get rid of it. Time to leave, don't stall. Understood, said Bill. Privates started bagging the muck. With latex gloves on and bags from the replicator. They got as much. Tossing it into a disposal below the surface to become totally vaporized. Cover every square inch with a magnifying glass. They listened unsurprised. Sticky plasma from the giant cell was everywhere fanning all over. Including Martian dust saturated in stuff. Two points of insanity it drove her. Captain Stark watched. Gloria, Julia, Bill and Joanne on police call. Asses and elbows it was clean as they could get it. That was all. Satisfied that nothing had become left, Dave dismissed them. Go on back to Star Watch. The crew was happy. Enough dirty work for now. It seemed top notch. Their replacements would reach them in six months or less. The first ship was launched. Two more leaving one week apart, guess. Sergeant Rafferty ordered the privates to return to the bar offering beer. 
they agreed, crowding the elevator down to where Phil filled a pitcher of cheer. Five glasses and Craig proposed a toast for cleaning up the glob bottoms up as alcohol took effect. Memory it began to rob, what a struggle Phoebe commented to Joanne, Gloria and Julia sitting there, I'm not volunteering for a mission like this anymore. It just isn't fair it was no way to become wealthy. Underlings who performed work felt subjected. There was no reward from people they protected. Many of the station's crew came there from Earth simply to get away. The third rock became miserable for all but a few privileged, in a way. Overpopulation, poverty, diseases and war spread wildly at home. Almost any honest job was no way to become wealthy. It was too well known. Requiring luck and talent, existing, popularity, celebrity status of a few. Crowd appeal has existed through history. From Moses till today it grew. Jesus was one of those popular preachers, you might say. Actors, singers and entertainment have been in demand for what we paid. What pleases a crowd seems right until you piss off the wrong people. Poor Jesus ran up against the Roman and Jewish clergy local. He was right. What people said, even professing him to be the Son of God. So that was it, and they crucified him. Lamb of God, it proved his might. All said, it was much true. Sapiens sapiens, modern humans were damnable. Rising through murder and extinction of any evolutionary rival animal. In the age of mammals one has to wonder why so many became extinct. Killed them off or had sex with it. Disease did the rest one would think. Piss ants that deserved to be washed away. Flushed in a black hole. All but a few contributed to intellect, shoulders up, in full. Those with brains in their guts would be gone given to their list. Anything that could be stored as knowledge retained in less than microscopic dust. In an eternal state of solid circuitry that a value may be taken. Some of its creators too. Calling all angels, ones not forsaken. Retained forever till needed for replication in suitable environment. They are very rare and becoming more so all the time. Their place of retirement. Falls back on changing environments. Species adaptability to that. Planets outside the solar system are unreachable light speed at. Fifth in a method in our salvation. One's science, the other's religion. There are some out there. Were we affected by extraterrestrials mention? A space colony out surviving civilization of our own local star, the sun, only modern men are capable of what we've accomplished. No others, none. It's our mother. Should be more like it. At distances, however unfathomable. Could they return, not to destroy but save ones likable? How do you think he did it in front of that kind of crowd and apostles around asked Gloria as her drink began to sink in. Son of God you're bound Julia carried on the conversation. Those foes we've seen are something a fact being. We weren't alone in the universe spring. We can transport information to reconstruct matter only voiced Meyer. Maybe they figured it out. Some kind of hospital ship orbiting up there Dave was watching them both and listened attentively to the girls. He wondered about it to being in charge of the chapel it unfurls. It was all about turf on earth. Always had been and always will be the war. Hope it returns before the third rocks destroyed in a nuclear hollow cast. Sure Dave commented to them. You're right sir Phoebe agreed fast. Only matter of time before man does itself in and at last. Dave pulled up a chair and sat next to them. It was against regulation to patronize. They were enlisted. He was commissioned and put the weapon aside. You know this thing could crack the mantle set on ten he told Phoebe. You're right sir I designed it and why it's made then the captain carefully placed it in the disintegration device causing it to vaporize. A backup could be reproduced at the touch of a button, the same size. Good job Captain Stark told Phoebe. Let you know when we need it again. Specialist Meyer eyed him with a smirkish grin. Dave followed, then Lieutenant Blue and Sergeant Rayferty. They rode up together. The ship delivered crews and cargo, departing Mars as scheduled her. One week apart the next two ships arrived and replacements pulled. Docking station required vertical thrust as ships were filled. A better system than cargo and container lifting or falling in atmosphere, let alone fuel. 
Earth launches or landing still old-fashioned, near. Nuclear propulsion became advanced once in outer space without friction. Luckily Mars was ideally suited to tethered elevation, non-fiction. Problems atmospheric density with the Earth. It played havoc on a long ladder. Gas surrounding Mars was very thin. Having storms, they weren't better. The thick nitrogen, oxygen layers on Earth's surface broke anything. Parachute and red rockets were still necessary to bring. Living material had yet to be transferred informationally with particle entanglement. Basically, molecular information was not too complex if inanimate. Raw material was the only requirement. Periodic elements are required. Molecular assembler, instant information link, inspired. Science fiction to fact the Nautilus. Submarine inspired nuclear propulsion. Quite real but like infinite instantaneous is far more than question. Getting on it, the entire station crew left Mars for home. Taking as little as possible with them. To meet weight requirements known. Out in space, homeward bound, the three ships returned, one week apart. Six month return trip was in a donut shaped, rotating transport part. Atmospheric ray entry, unchanged since the 20th century, a hazard. On ship number one Mike, Dave, Jackie and Craig calmly gathered, we'll land without a hitch commented Major Mike, war's hell life's a bitch Dave replied resolutely, and peacetime an oppressive scratch to each bump of the stratosphere began to warm the entry pod's subsurface. A red erupt slowed their arrival. The crew began to brace. Transport one was landing. What could one expect but a warm welcome? Staff began a meticulous decontamination, knowing where they came from. There was something viral, concerning Craig. The reading was above normal. Biological infection showed in Sergeant Ray Furty that was formal. Two weeks later the entire crew of twelve met for debriefing and final goodbyes. The privates scattered like flies, while leaders showed closer ties. All felt promotions to be in order. Recommendation went down the rank. Major Hassel talked to generals in charge of Mars to thank. Incident with the sergeant was like nothing on Earth, said Major Mike. If anything like that were returned to this planet, an epidemic could strike higher ups made critical note of it, instructing their replacement investigate. Was it a life form not of our planet? The debate. Mike and Dave remained at Mars headquarters on Earth with the lieutenants. The full gravity pulled on them after three years of space events. Their bodies would take some time to adapt to this normal weight. Ray Furty made a straight path to his old hometown awaiting his own fate. Thirty day leave time for sure. It accumulated to three months pay to boot. Nothing to spend it on in space heat enough for a nice ride people would salute. He looked around. Nothing had changed much in the time he was gone. Remembering strange events when he disappeared all along. Merchants and their goods. An old nightclub he frequented. Fast food, everywhere. Craig was glad to be back. Airy feeling of the virus, hard to bear. Why'd it chosen him? On the red planet things were lifeless and cold. It began to feel like home. The old town warmed his soul. Sick of military, he walked by a house his parents once lived in. It was empty. One died and the other moved on, oh well he thought, dump me reluctant to investigate further his next objective was an old friend. There were many he'd gone to school with. A few ties to mend. At 30 he was full grown. Leadership behind him, his situation was good. It all looked the same except his missing mother and father's neighborhood. His mother was dead. He'd heard about it from the space station. His dad moved on. Fighting's why he'd gone to serve the nation. Being a water bug most his life, Dave found himself staring at the waves. He sat on his surfboard offshore of Molokai, Hawaii. On leave for 30 days. Part of the island had been a leper colony. A far cry from Mars. What he had missed most off-planet. The ocean, which was ours. Paddling ashore he rested on the rock. What a beautiful day, was his thought. He had gone there to get away from the military, his time bought. Restful and alone, the frightening escapade of space travel behind him. In ways he missed the privates and underlings, commanding them. Gloria, Julia, Bill and Joanne went separate ways to enjoy time it gave. They were the four that had cleaned up the mess after Captain Dave. They did not know that in the effort, they had come in contact. 
the monstrous glob, which had been blown apart like a water balloon cracked. It had been on their skin. Unfortunately for them it spread in millions. An epidemic to begin. First to be affected was Williams. Then the girls, Gloria, Julia, and Joanne. They had left to every part of America. It wasn't good. Beginning to set in, they felt it at once, a flare-up of. People started dropping dead, as the giant cell took over the four privates. The captain somehow sensed it. Nowhere near but aware of its contrivance. Like Sergeant Rayfordy they vanished as they were devoured. The cell shrank to the size of an atomic nucleus then sank, empowered. Through the mantle to a water table the cells fell with their hapless victims, resurfacing wherever the liquid emerged. People showed symptoms. There was only one man on Earth immune from the plague. He'd gone full cycle with it on Mars. On leave back in his hometown was Craig. In a month it infected the world. The only vulnerable species, modern humans. Sergeant Rayferty, dumbfounded to find he was nearly the last man standing. Captain Dave had contacted the contamination too and wasn't dead. He reflected on God, remembering something of what he'd said. Feeling a kind of divine revelation Captain Stark prayed to our human savior, please return and reverse this thing he called out. Displaying his behavior, a soft voice replied that seemed to emanate from everywhere around, your wish is granted, I am here spooky, that sound. God decided against extinction of the human race. The captain was confident. Destruction not nuclear weapons. Dave safe on an island, no continent. Lieutenant Jackson had followed him. Last to leave Mars and to Hawaii. She had liked Dave and knew about him, Mike, Jackie, why he. A tropical storm erupted showering with wind and rain torrents. Monsoon like only brief, they stood soaking wet. Washed of seawater, a performance. Almost as if they were the last living fertile couple on the planet. Making a natural duty, repopulating the globe. God planned it. Did not turn out that way. The Mars bug which had threatened was contained. Most of the population simply vanished. A seventh survived maintained. Step, step and a half, then down an octave. Earth known for blues. The virus lost its host through isolation in fortresses the news. Mary and Dave survived while Jackie and Mike jumped into a volcano. They had the horrible glob creeping all over them. Chose it to end you know. Seeing anyone consumed by the Mars cell made one considerate. Slow and agonizing or swift and merciful. What one last path would befit? It was a tragedy. Ask William Shakespeare. Some of his best plays so ending. This wasn't a play though it had a beginning. Instantaneous signal sending. What it was about. Particle entanglement used in vital communicating. That's right, nothing's infinite or instant reverberating. In the hearts of Americans freedom continued, despite great loss and suffering. Out on Mars things continued. Death loot frozen outposts discovering. There was no turning back. No way to return explorers. It would take centuries to return to a population of half a billion adorers. No one wanted the crowded way of life anyway. Packed like sardines. No place to move up or down. Sideways was impossible run by machines. The glory of mankind lays in explorers. Always was and always will be true. Beyond our home planet to unreachable horizons until times through.